Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Talk to me about your name. What, what What's up? Because, I mean, we all, you know, names are everything. Look at my name, Arrow. Who would have ever thought Arrow? Yeah. So uh, my name is a shortened version of the name Enrique. My birth name was Roberto Enrique, which is too long for anyone to say. <laughs> so when I was like, I don't know, four or five, my little cousin couldn't say Roberto Enrique. So she said Roberto Enrique, and then she we just stuck with Kike because it was way easier than everything else. Dude, I and love it. I, I love it because, the, you know, one word, one name, one thing that we're always going to remember you for. And, and this, I mean, look at Madonna. Look at Cher. I mean, now we can just say Britney. We don't have to say Spears. Yeah. D does that help you out when it comes to marketing and everything? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a one-stop shop. Everybody, <laughs> keep, it, keep it. People just remember the name because they'll mess it up the first time and then they'll just try to think about it so they don't mess it up again. So it's a pretty easy name to remember. I love it. I love it. My son-in-law is Cuban, and, and I'll tell you what, family is everything. Dude, if we're not together, he's 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 you know, there's a mess. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, family is everything to me. It means the world. And, and, as, and as we jump closer into these holidays and stuff like that, that means we're going to have some good family, you know, together time. Is it the same thing for you as oh. well? Yeah. Every party, for every reason, we will have a party. It is <laughs> lots of family time as the holidays approach. <laughs> now, now with, with your Cuban background, does that mean that you get you get into more of the, the, the reggae sound? Or for some reason that when, when I hear you sing, I, I could hear you do merengue. I could hear you do bachata. I, I I listen to everything. So I take inspiration from every like cultural background in Miami. It's kind of a big mixture of all, from all the different Hispanic and Latin and Caribbean backgrounds. So I take inspiration from those and I kind of throw it in with some R&B, some pop and just add the little flavors and the little touches to make my music you unique what what i've always loved about the miami area is the fact that you know you've, you've got gloria estefan and john cicada who are just main supporters of making sure that the future of, of latin music is heard yeah i mean they're they're icons really what what do you learn from that kind of thing because there's there, there's parts of this country that that don't have the support of 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 the icons yeah i mean it it shows and they're so prevalent in the community and it really shows that like somebody like me somebody like them can really just make it in this industry and they're always supporting other artists that are trying to make it in this industry and it's really really beautiful to see well it's almost like they've, they've taken the competition out of it which which i gotta be honest with you the nbc's the voice is the same thing i never feel like that you're competing against each other you're showcasing your art yeah, even when you're literally battling. One of the rounds is called the battle. You're singing with another person and one of you is going home. It still just feels like a duet. Like yep. it just feels like you're getting up there and you're putting on a performance and you you take the battle part of it out until they make a decision. You're like, oh, oops. Well, yeah, and, and the thing about it is is that I, I don't know how you guys can find those harmonies and match those harmonies so quick in the game, especially when many bands, you know, spend a lifetime together searching for those harmonies. Yeah, I mean, it takes kind of just that brain power of having done this so many times that the harmonies are the last thing you're worried about. Like, it's the easiest thing to come up with. When you've done it so many times, the harmonies are just, just right there on the brain. You have a map of how to do them automatically. So you hear them, and it's just an easy thing to figure out. The composition is really the hard part. Really? Really, I never even yeah. thought about that part of it because I mean, you know, that's part of the storytelling. Yeah, I mean, the composition is everything because your dynamics and how you put the song together is absolutely everything. The harmonies are important, but once you just lock in those harmonies, it's kind of like not the most important thing. It adds so much flavor, but like you do it so many times, harmonies are some of the easier things to come up with. Composition and dynamics; those things are difficult. Is that the stuff that keeps you guys up late at night? I mean, I mean, I, I just picture you guys, you know, practicing, practicing, practicing. Yeah, that's what keeps me up at night: composition <laughs> and and making sure that I'm emoting what is meant to be emoted in the words that I'm saying and how I'm saying them. Those are the things that keep me up at night. Was there anything that you learned in high school chorus that, that really brought you to this game? Because, I mean, I, I loved being in chorus. I loved being in a chorus concert at, in school and stuff like that. And, and, and that's a, absolutely a part of your background. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I went to a school where we didn't really have a course. We had like a jazz band oh. um, and I was the only singer. I was in an all boys, like predominantly like sports heavy school. So I was the only like singer in the school. So I, but in that jazz band with the band director, Keith Cooper, I learned more than I think I would have learned anywhere else. He taught me most of everything I know just musically and music history and so much about the greats and so much on how to express myself musically and how to just follow my own like map musically and not copy somebody else just to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you said one of my favorite things, music history. I swear that if you're going to perform any kind of music, music history has to be a part of your chapters. Of course. I mean, somebody made that song for a reason. If you're going to perform a song, somebody made it for a reason. Figure out why they made it what their intentions were and then connect with it on your own level and kind of understand how the song came to be, where it came from, who was listening to it at the time. What were the like social implications of the song? I think those things are super important. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what the, what, I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk with some of the legends of music. And the thing is, is when they clam up and don't want to share their, their story. And the reason why they do that is because they want us to have the interpretation, but it's like, no, that I, I don't want that part of the story. I want to know how yeah. you came up with the song. Very, very true. I, I think that's super cool. Yeah. And, and, and what, and it really, how do you feel as a musician when they say, well, it only took me 10 minutes to write. And it's like, it took you 10 minutes to write and it's lasted 50 years. How is that possible? I mean, everything is different. I mean, it could take you 10 years to write and it's could have the same, like, um, sometimes you just get in that, like that kind of grind and you start writing and you realize this is heat fire. Like this is where it's at. And then other times it takes forever, but I feel like, it's just the uh, the power behind it is still there, which is so beautiful to see no matter how long it took to write. If the power is still there, it, it means everything. All right, I'm going to ask you a real personal question here because you worked at McDonald's. Uh, I, 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 I tried as a kid to get a job at McDonald's. They never hired me. You've been with me for like 10 minutes now. Can, can I get a job, please, with you? I, 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 I'll, be the, I'll be the person at the window just collecting the money. At the wind, I mean, I'm I'm not sure about that. I don't know if you have experience. <laughs> it's a difficult job, man. It's not for the weak. <laughs> I I really am because jealous of the people at McDonald's because you're always changing jerseys. You're I mean, it's it's all it just always seems like a fun job back there. Honestly, people talk down on McDonald's, but I loved it. It yeah. was so much fun. Every about fifteen to thirty seconds, you're gonna meet a new person, and I thought that was super cool. Well, that puts you in the center of real people. You get to talk with real people, whereas in radio, I mean, I've got four walls around me and a window. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the idea of working out the window and just it being a revolving door of new people. I just thought it was really cool to meet all those people on one day and then sometimes get yelled at, but <laughs> people that weren't yelling were awesome. It was super cool. <laughs> you're you're with uh, Gwen Stefani. Uh, Gwen, I, I remember when she first appeared on radio uh, in No Doubt and everything like that. I saw her in concert. My God, I, I hope you understand how powerful this girl is when it comes to music. Yeah, I mean, coming into the competition, I'm 19 now. I was 18 when the show started, but I'm 19 now. And I... Gwen Stefani wasn't really on my radar musically, like because I'm list I, like the artists that I know are kind of more the current artists or the bigger, older artists, like older, older and mm -hmm. bigger, bigger, like huge artists. And now I'm starting to realize how insanely massive Gwen Stefani is and what a legend she is in the music industry and everything she did in the industry and how she continued to break through. I, I just didn't realize that until after I made it onto her team and I felt like I was missing out because I just started to like kind of really do my Gwen Stefani deep dive and realize damn like she's she was doing it for real <laughs> dude I, I am glad you said you that you get into the current music because I'm into Doja Cat really big time I, I and, and <laughs> Dua Lipa and stuff I mean I think that we are th this is the future yeah Doja Cat goes hard I love Doja and I think it shows a lot of what is the future of like celebrities. It's a lot of your music and it's a lot of like what you're doing, but Doja Cat's a cool individual too. She's just dope and she looks cool and she's authentically herself always. And I think that's like the future, like artists like Lizzo being themselves oh and being God. true to themselves, 
just like Doja, it's the future of this industry. Like people want to see authenticity and they want to see realness. Oh God, you brought up Lizzo. I mean, I I, ha I have so many memories of Lizzo. The fact that she even played that flute, you know, from from the history of the of the United States up on that live stage yeah. and stuff like that, it shows how this nation is embracing Lizzo. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, that wouldn't have happened. Right, right. The way it's happening now, and being so accepting and being so open, and she's so so cool, and she's obviously like on the cutting edge of what she's doing. Because, like, I don't know, she's so, so authentically her. And I think that's so, so important. Well, CBS Sunday Morning recently did an interview with her, and she went back to the school where she learned how to play music and stuff like that. And I envision you doing the same thing, where, where one of the big networks is going to take you back, and you're going you're gonna to meet the, 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 uh, the, the, the jazz teacher and the other students and stuff like that that you, that you performed with. A dream. That would be so so beautiful it would be a full circle moment man and <laughs> right now it's still like i'm texting my jazz teacher um so i'm really i don't know one day like that'd be cool man what what i mean when, when you say that you're texting what what kind of things because you know i i, I love to, to uh, leave messages for those that brought me forward as well and it's more than just a thank you you really kind of give them the the spiritual journey or the, the you know the effects of what's happening and you know for a fact you would not be there if it wasn't for them yeah, I mean, the first person that texted me last night after my knockout aired was my old band teacher. He is, he's awesome. And it's just this like constant support. And it felt like even after I'm gone, I'm out of the school, I did musically. So like, we kind of will share that forever. And he is not somebody that was just my teacher at that point. Right. Now he was a mentor and he was somebody who I look up to and I'm going to continue to look up to as time goes on. Do you think that your connection to music is because of your love for reptiles? Because reptiles feel the rhythm of the earth. They People don't understand how important reptiles are to this planet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're correlated, but I definitely do love reptiles and I do love music, so it's very plausible. What is it about the reptile that you love? Because I, I had a 12-foot uh, bow constrictor, and, and I could not get enough of Tonino. They're, they're just so interesting, and the way they, like, maneuver the world and the way they move around and you see how inquisitive they are when you're holding them their their tongues flicking and you realize that that's them like observing their environment the way they move and the way they kind of slither is just really really interesting and i just i don't know i've always loved animals and reptiles were the easiest ones to care for so i was like let me get one okay let me get 29 more <laughs> They, they're just so, so interesting to look at and to interact with. And there's so many different colors and so many different types. I just thought it was one of the coolest things. I can so relate with that because in 1997, we planted 1,700 trees on this land that I live on. And, and because I just wanted the animals to come here. And you should see the deer, the hawk, the chipmunks, everybody who lives in this forest that comes to, I mean, they stop in and they go, yo, human, what's up, dude? Let's, let's go play today. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I'm a big animal guy and a big nature guy, so seeing the way the animals interact with nature, and it's just very, very beautiful to me. So um, if you were to travel the nation, where, where would you go to, you know, to get that vibe from the animals? Do I see you going to Arizona to get out there in the desert, or would you go up into the Cascades of Washington State? You know, honestly, I really, really, really like, like aquatic life as well. Really? So I would, yeah, I would probably stay on the coast. I do a lot of in the Key Largo because mm -hmm. I have a house out in Key Largo. I do a lot of like snorkeling and we do a lot of like diving just to look at the reefs and to see the fish. I feel like a lot of the fish kind of like interact similar to lead to reptiles. I mean, scales and all that. I just think they're really, really cool. So I like to dive and just watch them interact and see how beautiful because I feel like it's so untouched. Yeah, yeah. Have you read any of Ted Andrews' books? He does a book called Animal Speak, and so the animals that you're with pr uh, for that particular day, you can read it, and you're, you, it, it explains what your day is going to be about. That's so cool. I'm not a big reader, so I definitely have not read that, but that sounds very, very interesting. Because I mean, th there's a reason why you're connected, dude. I mean, because I mean, it's it, there, because it, there, your 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 outreach is more than just to human beings. 
Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting to hear. I've never heard that, but I appreciate that. Yeah. So when you sing a song from Simple Minds, my God, I've played this song since the day it was born on radio. What, how did you dive into the song and deliver it you know, better than what the band did? Yeah, it was uh, definitely scary. Also, that is a huge compliment, but I'm going to take it in stride. Um, it was very, definitely very scary because it's such an iconic song and you don't want to mess it up. So Gwen gives me that song. At first, I don't realize how important it is. Mm -hmm. I don't realize how iconic it is until I meet with Gwen. So I go in trying to do all these changes, and then she reels me back in, and she's like, hey, this song is so, so iconic. You do not mess with this song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you're in the corner of walk and don't walk. And what I mean by that is, is that you're giving it to us who have lived it, who's it's been a part of our lives all these years, and you're also introducing it to a brand new generation of music fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it wasn't part of my life, so I didn't realize how important how important it was to some people. So hearing that and figuring that out was definitely like eye opening. Okay, what do I do now? Because yep. what I this isn't necessarily my style. It's not my genre. Like. It's something I do and enjoy doing, but I love to make these interesting compositions. So having to do that was difficult for me, but I think it really, it was really awesome. And it was a great experience because I was able to come to myself and be like, all these extra things that you're doing. Yeah. They're so interesting. They're so cool, but they're nothing without the intention of the song. God, I love where your heart is. What's your website, man? Because I want people to follow you. I want people to love you. I want people to understand who you are and where you're growing to. Yeah, so I do Instagram and Facebook, but uh, it's K-I underscore Gomez underscore. Dude, I hope we get to meet again many more times in the future. I hope so. All right, well, you be brilliant today, okay? That's the plan, man. I appreciate it.